Hello guys and welcome back to another video. I'm Nathan or if you've meet, met me before you'll know me as the Whiskey Speaker. If you're new to my channel then welcome. It's always good to have some new faces on board. So I'm going to continue with the series that I started off and that's the Cotswolds Whiskey range. But before we delve into that something I've noticed is that when it comes to a peated whiskey it can be quite a divisive thing. For some people's palates it is not on the cards, it is not even considered. But if you've never tried peated whiskey before I would thoroughly recommend that at least you try and explore just that once just to see if you like it. You never know, it might broaden your horizons and you never know what you can find. But obviously, if you go all the way into like a bottle of single malt smoke head, you know, that is designed to basically be a bonfire of peat. Um, so maybe gently, gently and um, work your way into it um, and see if you find something you like. But also another thing that I've noticed is that when it comes to distilling, Everyone has their own different ways of whether or not they go peated or unpeated. Some people don't touch peat in the industry um, because of the environmental uh, impacts, and that's because of the release of CO2 and carbon dioxide. And obviously, the actual maltings process of burning peat to gain a phenolic content inside their barley to stop it from germinating and dry it out but obviously give that crisp, smoky flavour, obviously releases other kind of potential uh, environmental impact elements. So that's something to consider. However, putting that aside, also some distilleries, uh, if they do decide to use peat in their production, quite a lot, say half a year's production, we just focus on peat. And then the other half a year's production, it would just be unpeated uh, barley or whichever cereal is being used. And the reason for this is that you don't want to cross-contaminate any flavours or you don't want a carryover between peated and unpeated going when making your new make spirit going through the system, so through the stills. And you don't want that kind of traceable element of peat which can be very pungent and very lingering uh, and quite a strong uh, flavour element. And that might carry over if you've done a peated run and then you just put through even unpeated barley through uh, the wash and then distill it. That can still be then carried over if your previous run was peated. So some people go half a year and then have a deep clean and then other half year unpeated and that's the way they roll some people are actually not so bothered but there's then also a number of distilleries that will not touch um peated uh malted barley or cereal for whatever reason um that could be just because they don't want the downtime of cleaning out uh a still and trying to make sure that there's no cross contamination um or some people just don't believe in it for the green reasons previously mentioned um but then the question remains, how do you um, have a peated influenced whiskey if you don't use peated malted barley? Well, quite simply, an example is key here in the Cotswolds whiskey range. Now, this one that I've got here today for you, rather excitingly, is the Cotswolds peated cask. Now, it's obviously up for debate. What is the key factor in making whiskey taste great? Is it the yeast that's used to give all them different esters of flavour? Is it the tannins released from the wood? Is it the water? Is it the terroir in which the soil that the cereal grows? What is it? Who knows? It is up for debate and that's what makes whiskey so fun. But my point is this. How do you have a peated whiskey? or an influenced peated whiskey if you don't use peated malted barley. Well, the Cotswold peated cask here is a prime example of that. Just by using the casks that, are, in this case, have come originally from Isle, um, they have managed to kind of give a peated influenced uh, whiskey without the actual cereal itself being influenced by peat. Now, this is really quite a 
you know, packing above, well above the normal, which is a 53.7, a 50, sorry, 59.3% ABV. Um, it's quite, well, I'm kind of curious because I've never actually tried uh, a peated cask influence before. So, you know, they were established in the Cotswolds 2014 and uh, let's just kind of dive on in and see what this has to offer. But that's how they've managed to get a rate around it without kind of cross contaminating their um, equipment without having to deep clean it out. So here we go, let's see what we've got. I'm really excited for this. So, on the colour, I should also mention, I believe the barley that was actually used in this was Odyssey. Um, so it's slightly different. And previously mentioned, once again, two types of yeast have gone into this. Um, and they are the Anchors and Fermentus, if I remember rightly and using uh, village supply water, filtered and soft. So let's see what that kind of has an effect on the actual whiskey. Now, if you have a look at that, I would say that that's almost like Chardonnay. Just like, it's a white wine. It's a white wine finish. Or sorry, not white wine finish, white wine appearance. So let's give that a go. So on the nose, Spicy, um, dried fruit, and there's literally just the most playful wisp um, of smoke, like a very delicate, I don't know, it's almost like caramelised, um, it's like wood burn with caramel absorbed into that wood, with that faint wisp of smoke in it. So on the palette, let's give it a go. Creamy and spicy. That is really fruity as well. That is fantastic. And the layer of smoke plays through that um, throughout. Um, there's kind of like a, um, a really kind of rich cinnamon and slightly salty as well, which is really, really fantastic. Um, almost like a, with it on top of that, like a honey glaze of some description. That is fantastic on the palate, honestly. And on the finish. campfire um sugar donut um and yeah the wood again really long dry very kind of kind of floral as well in the finish um that's fantastic. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. For me, that that really does hit the spot. So, guys, that's really quite um, a simple look at the Cotswold peated cask. So, how do distilleries make uh, peated influence without using peated malted barley? Just use your casks. And this is honestly an absolutely wicked example. Thank you very much for joining me. If you've got any questions please do drop them in the comment box below. It's always nice to hear from you. If you've got any questions or any queries or even any whiskies you'd like me to try and review for you to help you discover what you might like in the world of whiskey, then just drop us a message and it's, I'm always pleased to hear from people. But in the meantime as ever, keep safe guys and enjoy the rest of your day. Bye for now.